Good morning, folks. We've got an Earth-directed CME to fully diagnose. We have some seismic news, a cool volcano, and looks into space news as well. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun starting with the flare and CME bottom right that we showed yesterday. After that eruption, we had only minor ones around the limbs, but that burst yesterday was a wide-angle CME, and while the direct aim of it sits about a month or two ahead in orbit, the CME is wide enough that ejecta is spread over a third of the solar system. NOAA's Enlil spiral is on point, showing the impact on October 1st. Minor geomagnetic storms should be expected from this one towards the weekend. Top quake of the day was a blood echo beneath Japan, but we had another blood echo ring in at 6.5 just to the north-northeast, which the USGS and Pacific Tsunami Warning Center both had on their lists, but it has now disappeared. False alert, they say. With one or two deep blot echoes and a typhoon nearby, the Northwest Pacific lithospheric alert is rising. Number of you asked about the volcano lightning at Fuego just before it erupted. Indeed, that's an upward discharge of the global electric circuit. Usually, those wait for the ash cloud to have the more conductive pathway, but the energy wants out. It's coming. Quick look at a super cool paper asking if Dyson swarms from super advanced civilizations are more rational versions of E.T. Dyson spheres than a complete enclosure. When it comes to discussions like this, my favorite was written by D'Amico, my friend and suspicious observer since the beginning. Now, if you're not into serious discussions on astrobiology, it's totally cool. But if you are, of the three kinds of non-fiction books on ETs and astrobiology, the best is the scientific and open-minded approach. That is where the Type 5 shines. Link to the book is below. Up next, we're talking cosmic rays, which work the world from the clouds to the viscosity of the magma below our feet. And indeed, we're getting confirmation today that the cosmic ray maximum we called out the last few years was indeed reached. The sunspot minimum we just had saw 8% higher cosmic rays than the previous record, the 2009 minimum spike. Excellent confirmation here of the modern peak of cosmic ray flux. The next few years, it will drop back a bit as CMEs block them out. Cosmic rays peak every 11 years at sunspot minimum. Quick note here on disaster. Turns out it was a horrible idea to be in the metropolis during a catastrophe back then as well. Just as knowledgeable preppers know today, your chances are much better well out in the rural regions. Curious note up next, perhaps some of you heard about the Jordan air burst 3,600 years ago. They say a larger-than-Tunguska-like object obliterated the ancient city, literally tearing people apart, shattering bones, melting pottery and primitive plaster. Thing is, all the chemical signatures of an airburst would come with a superbolt cosmic discharge as Earth took a super flare as well. And could an airburst shockwave tear arms and legs off people, as they found, but only melt pottery, as they found, not shatter it? Hmm, interesting. Last but not least, we're only about 48 hours from the first pass of Bepi Colombo by Mercury. We have waited so long for the follow-up to the Messenger satellite. Excellent comparison of what they learned last time and what they hope to learn this time as well. And none of it's more important than the look at the magnetic fields. Without a proper atmosphere, Mercury is the only planet left where we don't have definitive evidence of major changes that can be linked to a magnetic shift, the solar system shift. Measuring its magnetic field will tell us exactly that. We greatly appreciate your support. CME expected at Earth in two days. Eyes on the active regions until then. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.